Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and today I'm going to be working from here in my blind on the back porch. Heather's going to be with me. I know she's not in this clip, but she I promise she'll be with me for the photography. And today I'm going to use my Sony A6700 and the 200 to 600 f5.6 to 6.3 lens. And Heather is going to use her Canon R7 with the RF 100 to 500 lens. So this should be a lot of fun. We've been seeing hummingbirds out here and we just put out last night a hummingbird feeder it had a perch all the way around it i cut that perch off because i don't want the bird to just sit there i like it better when the hummingbird comes up takes a drink and then flies back and hovers for a second that's when heather and i will make our shots and then comes back and gets another drink um, that hummingbird feeder had six feeding holes on it and i covered all of them up but two with tape so the hummingbird will either be pointing this way or pointing this way, but never uh, in a direction that's, that you can't make a good shot. So we definitely modified the hummingbird feeder to make decent photographs. And I've actually uh, taken the hummingbird feeder down. We did this photography early this morning, but didn't make any video clips. I've already taken the hummingbird feeder down and put it in the refrigerator because it, uh, if you leave it out here too long, it just gets infested with ants. And the hummingbirds really enjoy, I have um, cypress vine out here, and I have lantana, and Heather and I have uh, a salvia hot lips plant that a viewer named Tate recommended that we plant. And the hummingbirds feed on that all the time. Um, probably when it gets close to closer to migration, we'll put the hummingbird feeder back out, but we did bring it out for photography today. We captured a number of species today including tufted titmouse. Here's my tufted titmouse photograph. I believe this one is a juvenile. They're not quite as colorful as the adults. And here's Heather's shots. Hers will always say Heather Boyd in the bottom right, and hers is an adult tufted titmouse there in our backyard. We made some northern cardinal photographs, both male and female, I think. Maybe all female. Here's my shot of a female northern cardinal looking all scraggly and rough. There, that's kind of the way cardinals and a lot of birds in our area look in the late parts of the summer when the sun is so hot. And this one, I think this may be a juvenile or it may be a female. I'm not really sure, but either way, it's looking kind of rough. But you can t see how beautiful these birds would be if their plumage wasn't in late summer condition. Now this shot's from a little further away. All the first ones were on the porch. This is from a tree that's a few feet away from the porch. And Heather's only northern cardinal shot was the only male shot of the day. So she got a male on one of the perches on the back porch. We made some photographs of a song sparrow. Here's my shot of the song sparrow, a 600 millimeter shot on the left hand, the live side of the Leland Cypress. And here is another shot of the same song sparrow, I believe, but this time it's much closer on the railing of the back porch. And another shot of the same song sparrow. This one's on the porch, but this is on one of the perches and there's the cypress vine growing all over the place. And here's Heather's shot of the song sparrow on another one of the perches there on our back porch. I got a little carried away on house finch photography. There's, they're always out here, but I made some shots that I really liked, so I'm gonna share those with you. Here's a beautiful female house finch, and I promise the hummingbird photos are coming, but first let's look at this beautiful house finch. I love the background, the way the 200 to 600 renders out of focus backgrounds, even though that's a really cluttered background, it's kind of smooth and beautiful. Not too awfully distracting, even though there's bright sun shining on it. And just a really beautiful example of a female house finch. Here's another female house finch on one of the perches on the back porch, and that's a lantana flower in the foreground. And here's Heather's shot of, I believe this is a juvenile male house finch on the wrought iron. We captured a photograph of a European starling that was halfway mature looking and halfway immature looking. Heather and I both got a shot of this European starling that has some immature plumage and some mature plumage. And look at the background of mine and the background of Heather's. She was sitting about two and a half feet to my right and she has a different background completely. We got some nice photographs of the cute little Carolina chickadee. Look at this amazingly cute Carolina chickadee on one of the perches, that's bokefied lantana flower in the foreground. Here's Heather's shot of the same bird. This one's on the wrought iron that has cypress vine growing all over it. And then she got a shot just like the one that I made, but because she was in a different position, the bokefied lantana is not in the same place either. We saw some Carolina wren. 
The Carolina Wren is another bird that looks incredibly scraggly and rough this time of year in the late summer. Look at that poor bird. And here is another one. These are photographs of two different Carolina Wren that Heather and I found. And I think the next one is Heather's. Yes, this is one of Heather's shots. I think of the same bird as my second shot. And I think maybe her second shot is also the same bird as my second shot. So I was the only one that got a picture of the really rough looking one, which was the first shot. Heather got a photograph of a chipping sparrow. I think it's a juvenile. This juvenile chipping sparrow is absolutely adorable. I wish I had gotten a shot of it and there's bokefied lantana all over the place as well. Heather also took some time and made a few photographs of a skipper who was hanging around on the lantana flower, which we actually have the lantana flower out there to attract the hummingbirds. But we love the skippers as well and Heather made three photographs of the skipper on the lantana to share with us. It's kind of a disaster area out here, but here is the hot lips salvia. And right here, both of those are not in their normal spot. Right here is the lantana flower. And a couple of times back here on my regular perches for bird photography out here that are just screwed onto the porch, a couple of times birds would land on there. And these items that we have up for hummingbird photography would get in the way of the shot. Sometimes it looked bad, sometimes it looked good. Over here, we have a bee balm plant that the hummingbird goes to sometimes. We didn't get any photos of it today. And right here, by my main upright bird photography area, I planted the cypress vine and it is going wild. And the birds love to eat off these red flowers. This late in the day, they're not open, but earlier this morning, they were open when Heather and I were out here. But I didn't get any shots of them on that. Our regular bird perches are getting covered with cypress vine. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not good. This perch right here, this vertical perch, uh, I had a blocked shot of it because the hummingbird feeder was hanging in the way. Uh, Heather had a, a good shot of it. Actually, I could shoot it if the bird was down here, but if the bird was up here near the end where they usually like to go, I couldn't get the shot. But some of the times the birds would land here in this area and because there's vines and stuff all over the place, it would look like it was in the wild instead of a perch on the porch. And then here's another one of the perches. I don't think either one of us got a shot on that. The hummingbird feeder was attached to this device that is in the foreground with the cypress vine in the background. It was hanging from here. But like I say, I've already put it up. Of course, we saw the ruby-throated hummingbird, which is what we were out here to see. We photographed both males. Occasionally, this male juvenile ruby throated hummingbird would land in the Leland Cypress in the background and I'd make shots. We started out in electronic shutter and you can see on the left wing, especially the left side of your screen, you can see examples of rolling shutter distortion. So we switched to mechanical shutter, both Heather and I did. Here's another beautiful shot of the cute little bird perched in the Leland Cypress there in the background. And Heather didn't make any uh, shots of the perched bird, but I thought it was really beautiful in the tree, so I made three or four of them. And this, I think this is the last of my perched shots of the ruby-throated hummingbird. And now on mechanical shutter mode, but only at 1 500th, we didn't have a whole lot of light. Here is the hummingbird just inches away from the feeder that's out of frame. Just beautiful. And you know, some people try to use a super fast shutter speed and completely freeze the wings but I'm okay with a little bit of motion blur in the wings. I don't like rolling shutter distortion in the wings, but a little motion blur in the wings is okay with me. I love this shot. He came off the feeder and turned towards me for a minute and you can see the beginnings of his male ruby throat. Here is a photograph that I call the Tate because Tate is the one who recommended that we get the salvia hot lips. And here is the ruby throated hummingbird looking down at the lantana flower that it was feeding off of. We really enjoyed photographing these beautiful ruby-throated hummingbirds, and this is all the same immature male that we were working on. Here's Heather. I told you she was with me today. She didn't go with me when I went back outside to shoot those video clips because it was so hot, but she was out there in the morning when it was cool. Thanks for shooting with me, Heather. Here's Heather's example of electronic shutter mode for a in-flight ruby-throated hummingbird, and you can really see the electronic shutter distortion here. I think the R7 has a slightly slower sensor than the A6700. And now in mechanical shutter mode, we get a little motion blur, which as I mentioned earlier, we don't mind, but there's no rolling shutter distortion anymore. So really beautiful seeing these ruby-throated hummingbirds. And Heather did a great job photographing them. 
And let me tell you, it's a lot of work. Heather does all of her own photographs, obviously, and she edits them herself and she puts the settings in the bottom, which is a laborious task. So I really appreciate her helping me make these videos. It's really cool to have a partner like Heather who enjoys a lot of the same type of things that I do. And she did a great job with these ruby throated hummingbird photographs. I think this might be my favorite of her shots, this one at one one thousandth. And we got also a female ruby throated hummingbird. We didn't get nearly as many shots of the female ruby throated hummingbird, but here she is. And she's got a little area right in front of her eye where the feathers are kind of unusual looking. So I don't know what's going on there, but she's still very beautiful. And here's Heather's shot of the female ruby throated hummingbird. And I believe she's got her mouth open in this shot. It looks pretty neat. All right, thank you for joining us today from our back porch blind. It's uh, been really useful since we built it earlier this year. And uh, hopefully it will last a long time and we'll be able to make many more photographs from the blind. If you like this content, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. If you wanna see some more stuff like this, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And as always, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.